Hi, I'm Tim Foss, and here's why I chose the Behringer 802 mixer for my audio. It's a bit of a review combined with how to set a mixer up to get the best out of it. The Behringer 802 is not the only compact mixer that works well for YouTube work, but it does show off all the features that you should be considering. It's small and the quality is very good, especially for the all-important mic inputs. And it also has just the right amount of functions for what I need now and for more things in the future, such as working with two presenters, Skype interviews, or even general mixing audio tracks with voice, music and effects. And it's very low cost, at around $60-$70 for the 802 and $90 for the USB version. So what's so neat about the 802 for YouTubers? The 8 inputs are just about right. There's two very low noise microphone channels which have balanced XLR and quarter inch jack inputs and a switchable 48 volt phantom power which is a must if you're using condenser mics, which I think you should be. There's enough line inputs for music or other sources and the effect in out works for either effects or for mix minus one for making sure that Skype callers on interviews don't get fed back their voice. Being on the top, all the input and outputs are easy to access, and the sockets are all solid quarter inch jacks. If you need to connect either phono or 3.5mm plugs, then just get some adapters. Running down a channel, here you've got 3 band equaliser for cutting and boosting high, mid and low ranges. The good news is that they're good sounding EQs. The sort of bad news is that they offer boost or cut of up to 15dB. That's not unusual, but things are going to sound very odd if you go all the way up or down. I'd recommend using these sparingly, maybe between 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, and not any further. The FX Send is a separate mixer feed which comes out of the FX Send and back in on the AUX inputs. The pan moves the input from left to right. You normally leave that at the vertical position for mono and this is the channel volume control. A slider would give you finer control, but it would take up more space, so a rotary knob is fine and you're not likely to be changing it a lot anyway. All the controls have a central clip position, so you know where you are when they're set to zero. The metering is pretty simplistic, but works ok. If you're lighting up just the minus 20 light, then your levels are too low. Zero is getting about right, and having the yellow plus 6 flashing on loud bits of speech is perfect. So just set the level to avoid the rig coming on at any time, and of course to match your recorder's levels. On the output side, I connect the recorder or my camera's line input to the main output here, and the headphones go here with their own volume control, and then basically you're ready to roll. A few important tips on how to set this up though. Different microphones have different output levels. Some produce more signal than others, and to get the best performance out of your particular mic choice, you need to set up the input gain correctly on the mixer. The best way of doing this is first set the channel levels to zero, which is the 12 o'clock position. Now talk into the mic at your usual level and distance with words that are little explosives, and keep going and adjust the gain level until the channel's red peak light just flickers and then take it back a little bit and you're done. Another tip is to turn the level controls on all the channels you're not using to zero, so they aren't adding any noise. This 802 is entirely analog, so to feed your PC you need an A to D interface. I've matched mine with Behringer's UCA202 interface. See the link here if you want to know more about that nice little unit. There is a version of the 802, the 802 USB, which has a digital USB output for the main mix, and that also throws in a simple but effective compressor. It's about the same price as the 802 plus the UCA, so you pay your money, you take your choice. So that's about it for this neat mixer. If you have any further questions, just put them in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe for more ideas to help you with your YouTube work.